In the last video, we looked at three different examples, really as a bit of a review of some of our factoring techniques, and also to appreciate when we might want to apply them. And we saw in the first example that it was just a, 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 a process of recognizing a common factor. And once we factored that out, we were done. In the second example, there was a common factor, four. But then after that, we used, you could say, our most basic factoring technique, or one of our more basic factoring techniques, where we say, okay, what two numbers add up to this middle, to the first degree coefficient, and then their product is the constant. And we were able to factor the expression. And then in the third example, we once again started off by factoring out a common, a common value, which in this case was three. And we could have done it the same way we did the second one, or we could have immediately recognized that this is a perfect square polynomial, but either way, we were able to factor the expression. Let's keep going to see if we can tackle some other types of polynomials that might require some other techniques. So let's say we have the expression 7x squared minus 63. Like always, pause this video and see if you can factor that. All right, well I've intentionally designed all of these so that it's, you, you can check whether there's a common factor across the terms, and here they're all divisible by seven. So if you factor out a seven, you're gonna get seven times x squared minus nine. Now you might immediately recognize this as a difference of squares. You have x squared minus, this right over here is three squared, minus three squared. And so if the term difference of squares or how to factor them is completely foreign to you, I encourage you to watch the, diff the videos on factoring difference of squares or do a search on Khan Academy for difference of squares. But you will see when you have a difference of squares like this, it can be factored as seven, this is just a seven out front, and then this part right over here, do a different color, this part right over here can be written as x plus three times x minus three. It is x squared minus three, minus three squared. Now, one thing to appreciate, this really isn't a different technique than the one that we saw in the previous video. If we just focused on x squared minus nine, you could view this as x squared plus zero x minus nine. And in that case, you'd say, okay, what two numbers get me a product of negative nine and add up to zero. Well, if I need to get a product of negative nine, that, must, that means that they must be different signs, a positive and a negative, otherwise if they were the same sign, you'd get a positive here. So they're different signs, and nine only has three factors. One, so you could either have one and nine, or you could, there's only two combinations here. You could either have one or nine, and three and three. And if you make one negative or nine negative, that's not going to add up to zero. But if you make one of these threes negative, that does add up to zero. So you say, okay, well my two numbers are gonna be negative three and three. And so it's gonna be x minus three times x plus three. And once again, I'm just focusing on what was inside the parentheses right over here. You'd put that seven out front if we were doing this exact same expression. But if you recognize it as a difference of squares, it might happen for you a little bit faster. Let's do one more example. So let's say that I have two x squared plus seven x plus three. So in general, when my coefficient on the second degree term here is not a one, I try to see if, is there a common factor here? But seven isn't divisible by two and neither is three. So I can't use the techniques that I used in the last few videos or even over here where I say, oh, there's a, there's a common factor and get a leading coefficient of one. So if you see a situation like that, it's a clue that factoring by grouping might apply here. And factoring by grouping, in, on some level, everything that we've just done now, you can view as special cases of factoring by grouping. But factoring by grouping, you say, okay, can I think of two numbers that add up to this coefficient? So a plus b is equal to seven, and a times b, instead of just saying it needs to equal to three, it actually needs to be equal to three times this, three times the leading coefficient, the coefficient on the x squared term. So it needs to be equal to three times two. If you think about it, we've always been doing that, but you, the other examples we gave, the leading coefficient was a one. So when you, or you took the constant term and multiplied it by a one, you were just saying, oh, well, a times b needs to be equal to that constant term. But if we want to talk about it more generally, it should be a times b should be the constant term times the leading coefficient. 
And in the introduction to factoring by grouping, we explain why that works. You should never just accept this as some magic formula. It makes sense for a very good mathematical reason. But once you accept that, then it's useful to be able to apply the technique. So can we think of two numbers that add up to seven and whose product is equal to six? And they're going to have to be the same sign since this is a positive value. And they're going to be positive because they're adding up to the same sign and if they're adding up to a positive value, they're both going to be positive. Well, let's see, one and six seems to work. One plus six is seven, one times six is six. So in factoring by grouping, we re rewrite our expression where we break this up between the a and the b. So I can rewrite this as, 2x squared plus 6x plus, I could write 1x, actually let me just do that, plus 1x plus 3. And as you can see, the 7x, let me do this a different color, the 7x has been broken up into the 6x and 1x. So that whole exercise I just did is to see how we can break up this first degree term right over here. But then what's useful about this is now, we can essentially apply the, we, we can undistribute the, we can do the reverse of the distributive property twice. So for these first two terms, this in a different color than I just use, these first two terms, you see a common factor. 2x squared and 6x, they're both divisible by 2x. So let's factor out a 2x out of those first two terms. So if you do that, 2x squared divided by 2x, you're just gonna have an x left over. And 6x divided by 2x, you're just going to have a three. And then you have plus, and then over here, this is a special situation where x plus three, there is no common factor between x and three, so we'll just rewrite that, x plus three. But when I put a parenthesis on it, which is equivalent to writing it without a parenthesis, you might see something else. Well, I can undistribute, or I can factor out an x plus three. So what happens if I do that? I'm gonna get an x plus three, and then I'm gonna have left over in this term. If I factored out an x plus three, I'm just gonna have a two x left over. Two x, and then this term, if I factor out an x plus three, well, I'm just gonna have a one left over, plus one. Let me do it in that same color. I'm having trouble switching colors today. Two x plus one, and we are done. So as I said, these are all various techniques. On some level, factoring by grouping is sometimes viewed as the hardest one, but I'll, I'll say hard in parentheses, because everything we did is just a variation, really a special case of factoring by grouping. And as you can see, it's all about, well, two numbers that add up to that middle coefficient that on the first degree term when it's written in standard form, and their product is equal to the product of the constant and the leading coefficient. And if you do that, you break it up, it works out quite nicely where you keep factoring out terms. And this one on some levels was a little bit more subtle because you had to recognize that this x plus three has a one coefficient out there on there implicitly. One times x plus three is the same thing as x plus three. And then see that you can factor out an x plus three out of both of these terms. And then once you do that, you're gonna be left with a two x plus one. But all of these, if you really feel comfortable with this arsenal of techniques, you're gonna be pretty, you're gonna do pretty well. And frankly, if none of these work, well, you might already be familiar with the quadratic formula or you might be soon to learn it, but that's when the quadratic formula might be effective uh, is if none of these techniques work.